Body Show, sponsored by Echo Spring Dairy, Steelhead Brewery, Oregon Electric Station, Centennial Bank, Ward Insurance Agency, Bradford's Home Entertainment, Northwest Natural, Price Chopper Foods, Howard Destinations RV, Jerry's Home Improvement Center, and by Mart. Hi everybody, I'm Todd McKim along with the coach. Welcome to this week's show, a completely different mood. Uh, what a week uh, difference uh, will make as the Ducks beat USC 17 to 13. They are now six and one. They have secured a winning season again. They have become bowl eligible. They beat USC for only the third time at Autzen Stadium. The first time since 1987 at Autzen Stadium. I mean, you put a lot of things into the pie and you come out with a pretty nice uh, package. It was a big win, obviously. I think coming off the, the very emotional loss to UCLA and a very hard-fought loss uh, and losing players as we did, I thought our kids came back. It was, we were spurred by our defense. They played awesome all day. I mean, at the first couple series, they turned UC, uh, USC away. And it were crucial situations when we uh, had a mistake on offense, fumbled early. Uh, Keeley Smith certainly picked up. Uh, he's going to be the leader. He's gonna, a lot of that pressure is going to fall on him. But he did a very nice job making some plays, keeping the thing together. Darren Latimer showed up big in the second half behind a sort of a patchwork offensive line that, that got better and better as the game went along. Defensively, Matt Smith, sort of his baptism mm -hmm. under fire, really, I, I welcomed him officially to the team yesterday. He made some big, big plays. Rashad Bowman had some great coverage uh, down the road and just overall, and great special teams play because R.J. Soward is as good a return man as there is and, and we negated him and that was one of our aims going in and it was, it was crucial and that was 11 men, the kicker, every coverage person, you know, full focus, full effort, and uh, great attention to detail. I do want to talk about that because I thought it was a critical phase of the game, too. USC ended up with only 25 total return yards, none in the pun punting game at all, and Soward's only return of the game came when one of his teammates fumbled. After the fumble, and, and it could have been disastrous. I mean, it was one of those deals where we had a chance to get the ball, and so all of our guys, when the ball was on the ground, went for it. It squirted up to him on the run, and I, I just, ha! Huh, Held my breath, said, oh, my God, here we go. And, and uh, Chris Lumen stayed in position, made a great play on that ball. And uh, that was the only time he touched the ball for, for serious yards. And, and that was an awesome performance by our team. It's interesting, you know, coming into the game, the offense had gotten most of the recognition this year, and justifiably so, because they had been sensational. And the, the defense had played well, but nobody had really noticed because the offense had overshadowed them. But in this game... The two defenses were outstanding. USC played good defense, and I thought your team, in particular, in key situations, was outstanding as well. Absolutely. I, I, really, I thought this game was going to be a much more of a defensive struggle. I didn't like the matchups in terms of our offense because they're, they were the best uh, pass defense against the, or excuse me, pass defense in the conference. They were also second or third in total defense and scoring defense, so they're, they were a good athletic group. Our players on defense, I think, took the personal challenge to say, we got to step up this week. The other thing in third down situations, third and short especially, we came up really big, some crucial stops. And again, Matt Smith showed up big in those situations. But uh, those are great effort. When you know it, it's on the line at that point, and you just got to want it more than the other guys, and I think our kids did. It was a sluggish first half for your team. Uh, did you get a sense early in the game or at some point that it, it maybe would be a lower scoring game? that uh, maybe the big plays uh, weren't always going to be there, that, that maybe changes things a little bit? Because I thought you did a good job of being consistent and kind of stubborn about running the football. Well, we, we went away from it a little po at point in the first half, and that was my fault. I told us, I told our guys we need to throw the ball, we need to throw more play action, throw on rundowns. I didn't know we threw 17 consecutive times or something like that. That shocks me. But we didn't go away from the plan. At halftime, we just fine-tuned it. We ran the same plays in the second half, a little bit more attention to detail, got better blocking, got better reads by our backs. One of the things that happens with backs who haven't played a great deal is it takes a while to get a sense of the rhythm, where the holes are going to be, how to read the blocks. And I thought Darren did a nice job of, of not just reading the blocks, but taking off and doing some things on his own in the second half to, to find and make holes and run a little tougher and, and just get comfortable carrying the football. It was a game of big plays. Your team scored on the big plays, 
USC had big plays but wasn't able to score. Yeah, and the one we got hurt on the one big play they got. We didn't uh, have one of our defensive linemen peel, and they caught us, and it was perfect call on their part. And if you don't peel on that running back on the outside, we're committed to blitzing, and uh, they made us pay in that regard. But overall, uh, we came back and really played smart. We gave up bend but don't break a little bit. Obviously, the missed field goals early for them were big, and that was that was really on the odds and wins. It was really swirling at mm -hmm. one point and blowing back and forth. And and I know uh, when I came out for the first half kickoff. And they were kicking the direction they were. I thought they must have screwed up. And they looked to win. It was going against the way it always goes. So I said, well, something's up in the air. <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, the Ducks were the ones uh, getting the breaks in this ball game and uh, making their own breaks as well. We'll get to the highlights momentarily. But first, the Pac-10 scoreboard as we check things out. First of all, Arizona, the team the Ducks will play next, rolled up at Northeast Louisiana. That the game was out of hand in the second quarter. More on the Wildcats later in the program. Well, a week ago, a lot of people thought you should have gone for two points at the end of the game against UCLA. That's what Oregon State did. They scored on the final play of the game, went for two, had a ball deflected in the end zone incomplete, and Washington survives 35-34. Flip the card, and you can see that UCLA remains unbeaten and second-ranked in the country, although they struggled a bit against California. And uh, on Thursday night, Arizona State and Stanford play to an overtime contest the Sun Devils coming from behind to win it 44-38. to All right, let's go to Autzen Stadium for the homecoming contest against USC. You see uh, Ruben Drones out of the hospital after surgery this week, but on the sidelines, an inspirational factor. The Ducks to get the football again, the sixth straight week they start with the football. This was a second down play to Jed Weaver. Uh, it's a little choice route for Jed. Did a nice job, nice delivery of the ball. That set up a third and one. Unfortunately, we had the first down. We just don't handle the snap. And I think it was a combination of Akili and Jason, unfortunately. But bad timing. But our defense, again, steps up really big. There's Rashad Bowman coming off the edge. Uh, Michael Fletcher finishing the tackle. Rashad getting back in on it. And again, this series, the crowd was awesome. I, I just say that all game long. The noise factor was really tough. I think it, it didn't show as much in the outward plays. But inside, I think it had to create some problems for USC in terms of the snap count and some other things. Some little penalties that piled up at the end. Uh, come back here again. Nice job. Fletch again. Uh, Macklemore. Edwards coming by. The, the interior people are just holding off the line, allowing those guys to make the tackles. Uh, errant throw on third down. And again, they're forced to try to kick a field goal. And as I said earlier, the winds were really shifting at that point. And uh, I don't think it blew this one away, but it, it was a tough kick from the angle. And one end zone, it was blowing one way. The other end zone was blowing the complete opposite. Exactly. Coming across. Great coverage here again. Trying to get the ball to R.J. Soward. Uh, just a little quick pass and let him do what he does best. But we had a lot of folks keeping an eye on where he was. And as you see, three or four were getting there. Great pursuit. Coming in. Terry Miller, I think, gets in on the tackle finally. But three or four guys making sure he doesn't go anywhere. Unfortunately, bust this one. Nice job by Eric Edwards to run it down. Chad Morton has great speed, and was, I was very concerned about his ability to break something there. Pass so, here. This was a tough one, and again, it, it was stripped. Uh, I don't know if he had possession before he went out of bounds. The official thought he did. Great play by Eric Edwards to strip the ball out. Again, the little bubble screen. Nice play by Rashad Bowman coming up. I want him to wrap up better than that, though. But he got R.J. down. Negative play. And that's big because, again, R.J. Soward is one of the best run-after-catch receivers in the nation. And you can see that's no gain whatsoever. So that sets up eventually a third down and 15. They go underneath. No good coverage here. A good job by your defense in Dietrich situation. Moore, 29-39. Dietrich Moore and Vanderbilt. Those nines. You know, we got a lot of nines on the field. Our safeties are 9 and 19. And again, force a field goal attempt. And again, as before, for whatever reason, the fates uh, are aligned correctly. He misses. Little play action. Real nice job by Keeley buying time. Waggle pass. Uh, get Griff coming from the backside. Big, big game. Gets his good field position. You can see this from the great blocking at the line of scrimmage. There's Claiborne coming. He has a penchant for getting to the quarterback, and we didn't allow that to happen very often. That was good. There's Griff again on the backside. Good run after catch. Protect the football. Saw that guy coming. And we're out about the 50. You made a good point there in field position because I thought for most of the game you had pretty good field position and they seem to be backed up inside their 30 almost every possession. Absolutely. Big, big play here. We couldn't capitalize on the good field position, but uh, Eric Edwards comes up with the interception and, and they're with their receivers and their, their people, they're going to throw the ball deep and we knew that going in. We knew after the last week at UCLA we we're going to get tested. But again, Eric in perfect position goes up, 
snags the pass right there, and uh, again, another turnover. That's big for momentum. So the Ducks now trying to get an offensive drive started here. They've been kind of clamped on the first uh, couple of plays. Try to do a little play action. Nice job by Akili. Uh, Tony just gets his toe in there, and uh, Akili feeling the pressure. He knows with a good play fake right there, ball behind his back, and we can really tell where it's at. So, but eventually breaks down on the left side. Uh, good comeback route by Tony Hartley on the outside. Again, just gets that one foot down inbounds and tries to pivot, steps out. So it's a gain of 11. Next play is a third down and seven. Okay, great job by Akili. We're getting good pressure. Nice block downfield by Darian Latimer. And we, this is one thing we need Achille to do, and he'll do more often, is one of the toughest things for a defense is when you're in pass coverage, you mount a pass rush, and then account for the quarterback. And we've given Achille the green light, obviously. Gets a first down, gets down, and uh, don't take the hits. So it is good enough for the first down. Nice touch on a, what we call a crack screen. Darian gets it, runs through a tackle there, reverses, cuts across the field, and it's foot race. And, get down to one, the one and a half yard line. And you can see this again, nice block I think on the outside. Good play fake inside to Chad Chance. They get the ball outside with a, a couple of blockers in front. Real nice job, Stefan DeVries. Cuts back behind Deke Moan right there. Uh, Chad Chance is still to get another block down the field. And then it's off to the races. And good blocking downfield. I can't tell who that was or a wide receiver. But we are getting, that's one of the real keys this year is great blocking downfield by the wide receivers. So the Ducks knocking on the SC doorstep. When we come back, the Ducks are trying to get the first points of the ball game. No score at the end of the first period. Well, we saw the Ducks uh, right at the doorstep there on a, a good screen, a little slip screen to Darian Latimer down around the goal line. Unfortunately, the drive stalls from there, and Nathan Villegas is called upon to kick a field goal as we pick up the action in the second quarter. In fact, it will be the first play that we see. In fact, in this game, Nathan Villegas Broke the school record for consecutive field goals with that one, number 12. Breaking Matt McLeod's record set back in the seasons 84, 85, and 86. He also set a consecutive season, uh, uh, season record for consecutive PATs. And there's that play we talk about, Sour. There's the one that's really scary because we do a great job. Dan Katz, uh, we wanted to pooch kick this real high, and they didn't handle it very well. We knew that was a chance, but then it scored right to Sour. And here's the play that, unfortunately, we gambled. We don't get the peel by one of our defensive linemen. And as such, it's one-on-one -on -one and with two blockers out in Eric Edwards. Very difficult. Chad Morton with great speed. So we made a mistake, and unfortunately, they made us pay for it. So the touchdown by USC covering 70 yards. And now, suddenly, it is USC with the advantage, 7-3 to three early in the second quarter. The Ducks unable to move it. SC uh, with the kickoff here. And Fletch uh, did a good job returning kicks again. Yeah, real nice lane there, good blocking up front. And, and again, Fletch gets out with good, good field position. I had a feeling this was going to be a game of big plays. Unfortunately, when, when you couldn't really move the ball up and down the field, it's going to be, you know, one of whoever does the best job and whoever has a breakdown. And it, unfortunately, it occurred it was when we got that big play, when they got that big play there, it was difficult for me because we weren't moving the football very well offensively. So I think we had to rely on our defense playing really tough. And they did. You can see here Palmer having to throw on the run. Great play by the corner. Great pressure, great coverage. Eric right there and, and pressured up front, moving out of the pocket. Real nice job. Matt Smith stepping up right there. <laughs> First extended tour of duty here. Uh, Chevy had a sore hip flexor and a, and a migraine that was, was killing him, really. And, and Matt uh, unblocked but did a nice job. Great anticipation. He's, he is a great run defender. He'll get better and better at the rest of it as he goes. Good coverage there again, Rashad Bowman, uh, right in uh, RJ's hip pocket. I think Rashad took it as a personal challenge because of the, he knew the threat that uh, Soward was. This is not the same play, it's no. the, the play right afterwards, and they tried the same play and the same result. They're not afraid, to, that's the thing, they're not afraid to go deep, and, and when a guy like him who touches the ball once every five times he touches, scores a touchdown, it's, it's worth it. Here's a great play. Great shot by Keeley, just tipped by the defense, caught by Tony Hartley, fumbled after the catch, and then recovered. And uh, as you watch this tip, he definitely controls the ball. Right here, he goes up, catches the ball, has it, boom. Gets hit by a really tough hit by both ways, fumbles the ball, has the presence of mind to recover. Big, big play. Unfortunately, the drive stalls, and 
Here they go again, throwing it up, and once again, Chuck's doing a pretty good job. Coverage isn't bad, it's just a great catch. Yeah, Fletch is right there, great catch by Parker. Uh, puts him in great field position again. This was going to be a double pass. Mike Bastianelli was a high school quarterback that we recruited, actually, at De La Salle. Great coverage and great pressure here. Doesn't allow him to get it off. In fact, we actually uh, hit him for a loss there. Rashad Bowman coming up again, cutting his legs out. Uh, Michael Fletch coming up to pressure. So good job by the defense here because SC already has the lead. It's 7-3. to three. Super job again. Fletch coming from an inside-out position. Uh, cuts Miller. Miller says, yeah, good hit. Nice job. And again, he's right there. I'm not sure this was not sort of an ill-advised throw. Sort of hung him up there. But we had been sugaring our coverages a little bit. I think we confused him. Now nowhere to go with it, so he has to keep it. Great pressure, and again, uh, Salua or uh, Buddy Smith. Buddy Smith just gets a, a hat on him, pushes him out of bounds, forces the field goal. So after missing two relatively short field goals, Abrams comes in and he bangs one through from 49 yards. Go figure, huh? Yeah, nailed that, yeah. I didn't think that he'd get that, but he did a nice job. Uh, they squib kick it. We get a nice bounce. Flex picks it up on the run. Another really nice return. Hits this. Just can't pull through that one. Ground causes the fumble real okay. quick. So good field position. About a minute and a half to go in the half. Yeah, we went into our no huddle offense now, and we're actually moving the ball pretty good. We had a we came back from a big penalty on the first down play, 15 yarder that we recovered, and still got it. Come out, a nice throw with touch here to Tony Hartley going backside. Has a presence of mind to get out of bounds, stop the clock, which is awesome. Uh, again, we're going to half roll across that way. Real nice protection. Keeley, perfect touch pass over the top. Tony right there. And Tony again has a presence to get, on, get out of bounds, as he said. On the next play, it uh, looks like a quarterback and the tight end just didn't read it yeah. the same way. The, well, the quarterback was correct. They blitzed, and our tight end supposed to be the hot safety valve, and he missed it. And that's unusual for Jetty. He's done a great job this year. So the turnover denies the Ducks an opportunity maybe to score and to cut into that lead or even tie the ball game at the half. So SC on top, 10-3. to three. Third quarter highlights coming up, so keep it where it is. Well, the stage is set for an outstanding second half by these two teams. The Trojans leading 10-3 at the intermission as we pick up the third quarter highlights. USC has the football as they get it to start the third period. Here's one of those third and one plays where your defense comes up big. Great job. Fletch coming up through the middle. Our line stacked him up. You see there's Michael Fillin. He was, the front side was stopped, so he was able to have to come back. Uh, Fletch and uh, Eric Edwards coming off the edge stop. Little option early. Uh, Achille, nice job. Uh, did get some good player for them. Came from our backside, really made it a hurry. He was checking his elbow because then he left a little skin on the turf right there. Uh, nice throw and catch. Tony Hartley for the first down. Again, stopped it because of progress. Good first, uh, good third down conversion. This is a third and five play. Play action. Great job of Achille stepping up in the pocket to avoid 44. Hits Tony right on the run, takes it in the end zone. I have to call him touchdown Tony Hartley, I think. I don't know. He's almost like Sauer, you know, about every time, six he, times he catches one. A real good ratio that way. See, our guard gets bumped right there, gets held. He can't get out. And actually, 44 comes clean. Keeley steps up in the pocket, does a great job. Just a field presence. Finds Tony cutting back against the grain. Uh, guy had left him when he starts Keeley step up, and then Tony just wins the foot race and gets in that end zone. Now, that's a great example of a drill that your quarterbacks run all the time. Keep the ball up in throwing position, shuffle the feet, and then get rid of it quick. And that's what happened. Exactly. Dan Katz, again, nice high pooch kick across the field. They try to reverse it. And great coverage down the field. Steve Smith, Michael Fletcher again. If we stop at the 27-yard line, we, had, we gave them our defense good field position in terms of the coverage on that special team. Real nice job, except we, you know, that we had about five guys right there. We just couldn't get off the blocks. Great job by Rashad Bowman. Possibly game-saving touchdown just coming out of there, coming from the offside. Remember the Ducks have just tied the game, and now, boom, on a big great third job. and three. Yeah, great job. Matt Smith coming through. Just uh, you can sort of see this coming. He bounces off one guy right there, and then just, boom perfect and smothers the back and against it. That's a mismatch because he's about 230, 240 and I think Morton's about uh, a buck 70. <laughs> and he 
again. This field goal doesn't make. He made the 40. I don't know. Again, I, I don't. He tried too hard on that one. Great job, Darren Lammer. Big, big play here because he's got his great field position again. And, and at this point in the game, I, you just you need to keep playing for field position, try to make the big play eventually. Run right by, by the on-rushing outside linebacker. Good block in up front on the right side. Darian, nice speed, and then he gets his shoulder pads going up the field. Great blocking down the field by Griff right there. It's awesome. You know, great conditioning by Darian, too, because in the previous play, when the Ducks have been called for a penalty, he'd run about 45 yards on a, on a pass. And Joey Harrington, his Joey. first career pass. Cool, yeah. I, boy, he probably would like to have that one back. We didn't do a very good job. That, that was Chris Claiborne, what he does best, drill the quarterback and, and get that play started very well. Great job of defense right there coming up, filling from the outside. Uh, CRN, uh, that's Nico coming off the edge, beats the block, and starts at a group of four uh, ducks, four or five ducks on the cap. And you get after him again. This time it's the, the quarterback. No one to throw to. Down yeah. he goes. Yeah. We just, the biggest thing there was great coverage down the field. And, and really, the quarterback has to hold the football. We sort of confused him. They had nobody open. We keep coming, keep coming. Anthony Martin, we're getting push uh, pressure right there. You can see it. He comes off. Uh, Buddy Smith low, and Anthony high. Third down, the Trojans don't get it, but there's a penalty before the play, so the Trojans get another down instead. It's third and 21, and this time Carson Palmer scrambles, and they just do get it. He, he's a real good freshman quarterback. He's going to be great down the road. Uh, that was a big, big play for him. Uh, we flushed him out of pocket, just couldn't do it. So SC making a big play at the end of the third quarter. When we come back, the Ducks will make a couple of big plays, one on offense and several on defense. The fourth quarter highlights coming up. Welcome back. Here we go into the fourth quarter. USC and Oregon tied at 10-10, but that will change quickly in the fourth period of play. The Ducks backed up deep. This is a second down and 13 play, and Akili scrambling gets a very important first down. Keeps the series alive. Real nice scramble. We had a sprint out pass uh, to our left. You see Claiborne coming like a, ooh, he's a big fella. He likes to put the hit on the quarterback, but Akili goes away from him, cuts back against the grain. And really nice job of getting the first down. Uh, Cruises just make sure he gets it and just sort of sits down on the sideline there. So the ball is now out to the 30 yard line. A little more room with which to run. And Darian Latimer now kind of uh, picking his way, weaving for about six yards. Yeah, running with much better authority and, and just getting some blocking, getting it started. Nice job by Todd Brooks blocking on the outside. And a big pile up and just sort of move that pile. Looked like a rugby scrum there for a second. So it sets up a third and two. Yeah, big play, third and two. We're running the option. Akili busted, takes it up inside and off to the races. And again, I, I think he said he snuck a peek at the scoreboard to see how close the guy was. That is our play of the day. Uh, take a look here as we do this. We're in a, a double tight formation, what we call our ace formation, left ace. They lined up in what we call a bear defense. They had really eight men at the line of scrimmage. Uh, middle linebacker Claiborne right here. They brought the safety up on our one tight end. When we start the option, the idea is to option off of this end man on the line of scrimmage. What happened, they flew outside. He came up. We got great blocks from our tight end tackle and offensive guard, but maybe the key block was our center, Deke Moe, slipping up to get on to Claiborne, allowed Achille to cut back the safety over pursuit, and there was a foot race because there was nobody else. They were in man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, locked up on the receivers, and Achille did a very nice job. His first three or four steps here was great acceleration. Then it was just a foot race, and he won that. Let's take a look at it again if we can. Great play, great execution, and great time for it. Here at the ground level, you can see it again. See the start. Real nice over block by our center. There's Deke coming out. Again, pushing the whole pile past. Keeley cuts back behind that, behind the pursuit. There's Richard Cook, the safety from the other side. Keeley takes a look back, glances up, runs in, knows he's got it. Uh, I want him to wait till he gets in the end zone to raise that football. We'll have a little discussion about that. And I think he was smiling as he said hi. He's a former friend, uh, childhood friends from uh, down there in San Diego. The point after is good. Big play. And now the onus is on the USC return people and their offense. And again, the great kick coverage. Yeah, real nice job. Great hang time there. Great coverage down the field. The, the height on Dan's kicks allows to get great coverage. That's a whole key to the thing. Wesley Mallard and several others in on the tackle. 
Real nice job again, forcing the issue. Uh, Terry Miller, or Salpa too, excuse me, on the tackle. Uh, I think Matt Smith comes flying in there, really sort of sets it up. And then for great pursuit from Saul on the backside. Uh, one of our, no, it is Terry in there also, 38 and 48, both in on that. Oh, nice job. Dietrich Moore coming on the blitz from the backside. Gets it, big, big play again. I've, great momentum and the crowd was really into it at this point. Uh, it's just awesome. Great feeling, and again, when he can come in untouched, get to the quarterback, it's a big, big sack. Nice job, I thought, of disguising the blitz there, too, from the backside, and he never knew what hit him. They get it, the football back as the Ducks can't move it out around midfield, and so SC now, this is going to be their last foray, and uh, obviously a little controversy as to how this drive ends. A big play to Bastinelli, or this is Parker, excuse me. Well, that is Bastinelli. That's, that's, yeah, that's right. Isn't it? Big, yeah, they, they got that in down the middle. You need to have a little bit better coverage. The linebacker should have converged on that. Uh, nice job right here on the stop. Uh, BMAC, big, big tackle there. And no, you're not getting in on me. And again, nice job at the line of scrimmage. Fighting off the double team right there. Bouncing it out because our linebacker has a free shot right to Mac, who's unblocked, makes the play. So uh, SC down deep. They need a touchdown and a point after the tie. Nice job by Vandy and Saul. The official almost blocked Vandy out of this play. It would have been a real shame. Nice job on the quarterback uh, draw to hold him there. This is the play. Uh, no, this is the one after the play that got called back because they had the penalty or delay a game. Overthrown. They decided to go for the field goal, get points on the board, uh, make it, and now it's a 17-13 ball game. So now, there it is, 4-14 to play. You had your hands team in. They kick it deep. You get the ball up to 23, and this is a great job by Darian and that offensive line, and also Todd Brooks in there blocking. Yeah, real nice job. But we, your four-minute drill is designed to run the clock, and you've got to run the ball in those situations when everybody knows you're going to run the football. And again, nice job of the line, staying in front. Todd Brooks, nice block. Just staying on the blocks, let Darian run to daylight. He picks a hole, does a great job of pulling through several tackles. And that's a big, big play, because one, he gets a first down, but gets us better field position. Again, we can continue to try to run. Hey, in this situation, you feel, well, if we get two first downs, we'll win the game. Well, you get one first down in one play, so yeah. now you really need to get three first no, downs. You, you do, and that, this play right there you just saw is a great block by Todd Brooks. Really nice block. And again, Darian running with good authority, cutting back, controlling the football, keeping both hands on it, going through the line. And a personal foul penalty as well. And so now you just have to hold on to the ball. They've used their last timeout after, uh, well, right after this play. And so all you do is have to hold on to it and you win the football game. And you do. It was going to come down to one play, but that, luckily, yeah, that was, that was a good one. <laughs> one of the best hits of the night. Yeah. Where's my security people? I can't figure that out. Just let these folks come out of the stands. <laughs> yeah. Lucky I know her. That's right. Well, congratulations. Uh, very important win. The Ducks are now 6-1. and one. We'll talk about that more later. Statistically, only 13 first downs for SC and just barely over 100 yards rushing. Outstanding job by the defense. You look at the total offense, and again, a lot of that for both teams came on two or three big plays by each team. So the, the defense has really did a good job. Flip the card, see the uh, turnovers. The Ducks actually commit two, but get away with it. Penalties, and then we decided to put in that return statistic this week, Coach. 102 versus only 25. And again, no punt return yardage for USC. And a very good job, once again, on third down conversion. SC only four of 15, about 27, 28% there. Individually, let's take a look first of all at the leading rushers, Darian Latimer, 24 carries uh, for 87 yards, much of that in the fourth quarter. Akili Smith, the second leading rusher for Oregon. Morton with the over 100 yards for USC. Of course, he had a couple of big ones that uh, helped his total yardage. Throwing the ball, Akili Smith over 50%, 231. He had the touchdown pass to Tony Hartley. The interception as well. Carson Palmer got most of the throwing opportunities for USC off the bench. Receiving, Tony Hartley led the way. He had the one touchdown, 6 for 118. Parker led SC 4 for 106. And defensively, again, it's been this way all year long. Great balance defensively. No one guy really sticks out. And Vanderveer, I think for the fourth consecutive week, leads the team in tackles with the 11. Fletch with 9. Of course, uh, Moore with the big sack. And Eric Edwards with the interception. After the game, we talked to the players, got their reaction to the big victory. 
that's one of the ones you like, man. He's you work hard for it. You know, you, you know, we we have been blowing out teams, and you know, and that's fun and all good and well. But these are the ones that you just really take with you, man. We, we battled it out, you know, and it was hard, hard hitting, and and that C played great. You know, they, you know, it, it come down to the end, and you know, these are the ones that you just enjoy. So those games pop up. Sometimes it's a shootout, and sometimes it's it's a grudge, and uh, we caught them on a good day, and uh, they came out and fought. We fought, but we came out on top. Well, everybody was just a little frustrated that we weren't playing as well as we wanted to, and we knew we were capable of playing better. And uh, it was just an attitude that everybody had in the, in the locker room. We know we got to step it up. Defense played fabulous today. They shut them down basically in the second half to a field goal, and I uh, scored that last minute touchdown. That's all we basically needed. Yeah, we were just trying to get the first down, and uh, I said once I, you know, take my little drop step and get my eyes upfield, and I happened to see a little hole open up, and I cut it up, and next thing you know, I was just running. I just tried to get to the end zone. They brought the hats. Playboy that guy hit harder than I've ever been hit in my entire life before. And it was it's up to the coaches to stick with the run, which I thought was an excellent decision. I mean, you know, eventually we, we popped a couple here, there. Like Coach Zuma always says, you know, first time we've run the play, you get two yards, three yards. Eventually it goes to four, five, ten, touchdown. So it, 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 it takes a toll on, their, on those guys. Well, it's beautiful to see a disappointing look on their faces. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys came on recruiting trips here, I can remember, and uh, I know they probably regret, you know, right now and uh, seeing the success we have. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I'm going to talk and brag about it all summer. It's been a few weeks here, and I think that's good. I got in a little bit last week and uh, practicing. I'm getting a lot of reps. So I'm getting more comfortable all the time. And this obviously, uh, like I, this tonight gets me even more comfortable. So from here on, I always should, as long as I can learn the defense and know what to do, I'll feel more comfortable. Different levels of the game have to step up. Sometimes it might be special teams. Sometimes it might be the offense. Sometimes it's defense. Today, defense side, they need to step up, make some plays, and, you know, the coach put us in a great position to make plays, and we made them. I thought your depth really paid off dividends in this game. Uh, you, you're down three tailbacks. So you're down your you know, leading tackler from a year ago. You've got the, your third or fourth string fullback in there blocking at the end. You've got a reshuffled offensive line. You know, depth makes a big difference. Depth and kids pulling together. I, I think that game, as I said, because of coming off the UCLA loss and, and the way we lost it, we talked already about the injuries, but the kids, and I was concerned all week a little bit just about having our heads down and being discouraged or, or, or whatever, and, and maybe it's just me as a coach. The kids were okay, and defense played great all week in practice, and I should have seen a lot of this coming. I was very pleased with the way they battled. Uh, a lot of pride, a lot of character, and uh, that was it. We didn't play great on offense. We played great on defense and special teams, and you need to have two of the three, and we got two of the three. Uh, anytime you beat SC, they got great athletes, a good coaching staff as well. Anytime you beat SC, you know you've done a re really good job, and that's what the Ducks did. When we come back, we'll take you uh, inside to some of the behind the scenes of game day with some people down on the sidelines. Also, have our senior feature as well. We talk about the guys from Southern California, glad to beat USC and now have bragging rights. We heard from McLemore and Fletcher. And another one is the focus of this week's senior profile. Rob Lee Hockey caught up with uh, Leah Sualua earlier in the week. My name is Leah Sualua. Sometimes people get it right. I really don't let the teachers have a chance to say my name. I know, I know when the alphabet comes up when, when they're on S's that it's, it's going to be me. So I basically just raise my hand or I yell here. In Washington State, they pronounce my name Sue Alausa. I guess people who can't say my name know me as the guy with the club. I broke my hand in practice. And uh, ever since then, I've been wearing a club. I can hear fans from opposing teams heckling me. They just call me clubby, or they'll sing the song from Ice Cube, We Be Clubbing. We be clubbing. We be clubbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll just try and get me unfocused, and it just, I don't know, just makes me play better. I kind of like it when fans talk trash. And Tuyasa Sokol back to throw, wants the end zone hit, gets away, got to be dumped down, though. What I enjoy most is just the the atmosphere around with the players i mean how everybody's together there's no there's no little clicks within the team i mean we're we're one big team Houghton's unbelievable i mean it gets it gets louder here than many of the places we played in it's just, it's just great i love the fans and they they got a lot of support so i i love playing here tough playing your final year with a club on, uh, on your hand but he's had to do it and done a good job at it 
he really came on last year, really, and was probably our most consistent defensive lineman last year. This year, he did break his hand in practice. The doctors are very concerned whether he'd be able to play, not because they could set it and all that, but just the pain, and he, he had no problem. He played that week with the club on, and it, it limits a little bit what he can do. You know, you can't use your hands as well, but he's done a great job and, and just continued to play really hard and been great leadership. He, he's one of the more popular guys on the team. He, he has a lot of respect from our other players. Well, when you play with a club, you get respect from your guys and their guys, too, I guess. Well, now it's time to uh, take a look at the kind of behind the scenes of Oregon football. These guys uh, never have their names called during the course of a game, but they're very important because without them, you could have total chaos on the field. It's the chain gang. Rob Lee Hockey has more. You see which way we're kicking? All officials get to uh, put in their names at the beginning of the year, and then uh, John Crane, our commissioner, picks Half out who gets what games, and First uh, from there uh, we get to Oregon get to do one. It was a great time. They're down this way. They're down the other side. Yeah. Oh. Nice catch. The big thing is just being here on the sidelines. I mean, it's a big, big deal for this kind of game. Nice job. It's really hard not to cheer. You've got, uh, you've got to be, you're still a game official, and a game officials aren't supposed to show anything. So we try not to say anything or do anything, but inside we're doing some cheering. Ooh, there is a hit. Step back. Hopefully the scores up. We're not neutral in this one. Oh, he's gone. Because we're a chain crews, we're rooting for the Ducks. We just can't say anything. Oh, baby. But uh, we're doing this because we want to be part of the Oregon success and what they've been doing here. And, and uh, we feel like we're part of that. Don't see any little chain cutters down there. They're shortening the down and distance, but they yeah. do a good job. And again, you know, without them, who knows what the game would be like. Anyway, good job and uh, congratulations. And uh, I guess you can cheer for the Ducks next time you might be in the stands, though. When we come back, we'll be joined on the set by Rashad Bowman. He had an outstanding game against USC, and he's going back home to his native state of Arizona this week. That and more coming up. Well, all year long, defensive coordinator Bob Foster has put the cornerbacks in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and most of the season, these guys have responded in a big way, and one of those guys is Rashad Bowman, a young man from Arizona who was given the responsibility of trying to contain these USC receivers, and you did a great job, but congratulations on the win, and Coach Bilotti said he thought you took it as a personal challenge this week, uh, facing Soward and the gang. Was it that way? Yeah. Um, all week, they were clubbing up RJ and telling us how great he was, and we knew that we had to go out and contain him, and if we didn't, he was going to make us look bad. When you look at game films, uh, preparing for a team and you see what a guy like Soward can do, what are you thinking when you go into a game like that? Um, that we need to make sure that we have good technique and, you know, know the down and distance and everything, and, you know, just hope we can contain him. They're not afraid to throw it deep, so you know you're going to be running downfield a lot, right? Uh, yeah, we knew that he was, like, the top five fastest receivers in the country, and we knew that they were going to try us to go deep, you know, knowing that we got beat a couple times against UCLA. And so we just had to prepare for it. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the game, and you can talk about the coverage and what you're trying to do here. We talked about they going back-to-back to, back to Soward. Uh, yeah, this play right here, um, he told me he was going to outrun me. Uh, oh. He just basically flat out told me he was going to outrun me. And I just wanted to see that happen. Well, we didn't see it happen, so again, they try, they come back the very next play. Yeah, um, I saw him come out in the same set, and um, I asked him at the line, because I wanted to play press, and I asked him, why would you, why are you guys going to run the same play? <laughs> and he looked at me like, I couldn't believe he said that. <laughs> what about this one coming up and playing kind of almost run defense? Uh, Fletch told us that he was a quarterback in, in high high school and everything, and uh, we expected that they were going to try a double pass or something like that deep. And we just played it well. Now we're into the fourth quarter, and they, they try the out. You get in there to break that one up, too. Yeah, um, he beat me on the previous out, and uh, like right before that play. And um, I told Carson Palmer, don't throw it again. He threw it again. That messed me up. Now you're telling the folks in the crowd, too, that they, I, I can play. <laughs> <laughs>
You look like you, I mean, you're not a guy that jumps up and down a lot. You look, you know, when you're on the field most of the time, pretty much under control. But in this game, you showed a lot more emotion. Yeah, um, I knew it was a big game for the California boys and, you know, going to UCLA last week and losing. That, that kind of limited their bragging rights, and I knew that we needed to get this one for them, and I hope they can get them for me next week. That's exactly right, because it's Arizona this week, and you got a couple of guys, uh, you and Tamani, of course, defensively, uh, Jason Moss offensively as well. This is a big game for you guys going back home. Yeah, um, last, last year we beat U of A, you know, first game of the season, and it gave us a lot of bragging rights, and they really couldn't say much, you know, with them having had about the same season as we had last year, but we beat them, so we could say a little bit more. Well, you've beaten them four consecutive years, as a matter of fact. Let's talk about this Arizona team, because in years past, uh, they, everybody talked about their defense. Now, McDaniel and Northcutt, the quarterbacks, Ortiz Jenkins and Keith Smith, this is a different team, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different team all, all over. Um, I guess they have a little confidence. And, and you know, playing two quarterbacks like we did last year, and um, we just have to shut them down. Your thoughts about being out there isolated so often, one on one, knowing that you know either you make the play or they make the play. I love it. Uh, that's why I came here. They told me that, and that that's how they play defense. And we were going to be on islands, and anybody can play his own, you know. But it takes the athlete, I guess, to man up. All right. Well, you almost had your fifth uh, interception in this game. Came close. Maybe you'll, you'll save it for Arizona. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> you have to go through a couple of ball drills with me this week. <laughs> All right. Push -ups. <laughs> a few push-ups. Well, you've got a couple of picks already this year. One for a touchdown, so keep up the good work and good uh, luck down at Arizona. Thank you. All right, Rashad Bowman, outstanding. And he's only a sophomore, folks. We've got two more years of watching this guy play in the secondary. When we come back, we'll talk more about Arizona and the trip to the desert. Welcome back to the show. We'll talk about Arizona in just a minute. First, one, I kind of clear up matters with the USC and kind of put this one to rest. Let's first of all talk about any injuries. You talked about Chevy with the migraine and also the hip. Anybody else? No, we're very fortunate. Garrett Sable uh, sort of tweaked. He's had both ankles be, have been painful for a couple weeks, and, and uh, at this point he may not be able to practice tomorrow, but nobody in the game uh, suffered any inj injuries that would keep them out. I don't know that we're going to get anybody back this week either, though. Like I said, uh, Zach Frieder was healthy last week, was able to play. We didn't play him very much. Um, I don't think, you know, a lot of people ask me about Herman Ho Ching. I think it's several weeks away at best, although he made, I think, some progress last week. He still has not run, cannot run. And uh, obviously, we'd like to have him back, but I, I think we want to make sure if he does come back, he's completely healthy to run the football. All right, let's talk about Arizona now. This is a very good football team. They've had some very impressive victories already this year. Their lone setback was at home to UCLA, a game that was up for grabs. In fact, they led, I think, in the fourth quarter, 28 to uh, 24, and then UCLA kind of ran away from him at the end. But this is a very good football team. Very good team. Uh, probably the most explosive, one of the most explosive offenses in the conference. Uh, two great receivers in McDaniel and Northcutt. Two great quarterbacks in Jenkins and Smith, who both have the ability to run, which is the scariest part about it. And they keep you very honest, because they'll run some option, and they'll scramble, run some design quarterback draws, things like that. Um, they have three great running backs now, and Callen and Candidate and Ephon that are all, I, I don't know who's the best, they just keep using them. It's the three-headed tailback, the two-headed quarterback, they've got receivers. They've always been a great defense. Uh, they're, they're one of the top three defenses in the conference right now. They're coming off a big, big win. I, it looked like a fairly easy win score-wise, and uh, we have to go up there and play at their place. And uh, obviously it's tough. We, it's a lot riding on this game, two very... Fairly evenly matched teams in the national rankings and obviously a lot uh, going for postseason play now. now. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from Arizona and their game against UCLA, a shootout down in the desert. And here's what you're talking about. This is Trung Candidate, who yeah. last year was one of the leading rushers in the conference. He's got great speed. Nice cut back there. They, this was a design play to get him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and he just gets caught from behind, but uh, he's got great speed. Talk about the wide receivers, Jeremy McDaniel. Watch this catch. Yeah, this is a great job of getting the ball off, and then what a what an acceleration to the football. I mean, that that's scary because you can't stop that, you can't cover it. Well, if you got speed on one side, you got speed and hands on the other side. Dennis Northcutt, one-handed grab here. Yeah, this is a great, uh, unbelievable catch. Plus, he's a great return man too. They ran a reverse to him in this game too. That was scary. It got called back, I believe, but. Boy, has he got some speed. And, and again, that's, that's scary. And then you've talked about the defense. They always have it. Daniel Greer inside, making yeah. tackles everywhere. And, they, and they're, 
They're even this year different on defense. They've got some really well. This was the play I talked about earlier. The reverse uh, that I think it got called back uh, due to a lineman not being aligned correctly. But boy, what a gear he's got. So two teams that have high-powered offenses will duel in the desert. And of course, here's Calvin Efon, who's scored most of their touchdowns this year. Big, strong running back. So it will be indeed a test. A game that you'll be able to see on many of these stations starting at 3:30 Pacific time next Saturday in Tucson. Arizona climbed one spot in the AP poll this week. They are 13, Oregon is 12, and so it looks like two evenly matched football teams. The emotion this week coming off the big victory over USC and now propelling you forward you know, to this game against Arizona. Well, I, I think we, we gain a certain measure of confidence that we can win without some of those guys that we've played with before. Uh, this win uh, coming after the emotional situation at UCLA was very, very important for us to get us now the second half of the season. Every game is going to be tough and every game is going to be important. Well, from here on out, everything is gravy after the 6-1 uh, and one start. Of course, we'll have all the highlights for you next week. For the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining us. The Mike Bellotti Show, sponsored by Echo Spring Dairy, Steelhead Brewery, Oregon Electric Station, Centennial Bank, Ward Insurance Agency, Bradford's Home Entertainment, Northwest Natural, Price Chopper Foods, Howard Destinations RV, Jerry's Home Improvement Center, and By Mart. This weekend only, Romania's RV Center is sending you off in style. The best in every way. Join us for a free barbecue and factory authorized 98 sell off. Final close out savings up to $35,000 off. Every pre owned RV liquidation price. Buy with no payments till next spring. Even savings up to 70% off on RV parts and accessories. Be the best every day. Through Sunday only at Romania's RV Center, Highway 99 North, just past Airport Road. Todd McKim, Walt Fox, and Rob Lee Hockey, the most experienced sports team in Western Oregon on Northwest News, the news leader.